you know, we, we think that crypto is, um, is three revolutions in one. One is the money revolution, which is what we're talking about here uh, when we talk about Bitcoin. And uh, that could be the biggest of the revolutions. The first global private, private no government interference, uh, a digital rules-based monetary policy with no central point of failure. In her latest interview on Public App, Kathy Wood, founder, CEO, and CIO of ARK Invest is discussing her view on the current banking crisis. She sees the actual developments as a clear proof of concept for Bitcoin. Stay to the end of the video when Kathy shares her take on the revolution in the crypto space and the Fed policy decisions. We will bring you the highlights of this interview, so make sure to stick around to the end of the video to get the best insights. If you enjoy crypto and finance content, consider subscribing and liking the video. To support our channel, you find a couple of great offers from our partners in the video description. Check them out. Uh, I think it is an anti-fragile asset, and every one of these crises strengthens it. The network becomes stronger and healthier, mm -hmm. and we have metrics to manage that. The price is extremely volatile, as is the case with most uh, innovations and new technologies in their early days. There's a lot of uncertainty. Why? And this is a perfect example. There's the old guard, and they're trying to say, we're going to wipe this innovation off the face of the earth. It has no reason to exist. Uh, and the innovation just gets stronger and stronger and stronger with time. And if you look at the measurements of the health of the network, the Bitcoin network, the Ethereum network, uh, their, their health has actually improved through all of, uh, all of this turmoil. Uh, so, uh, that that's essentially what I would say, and you know, we we think that crypto is um, is three revolutions in one. One is the money revolution, which is what we're talking about here uh, when we talk about Bitcoin, and uh, that could be the biggest of the revolutions. The first global private private no government interference. Uh, a digital rules-based monetary policy with no central point of failure. Who knew Silicon Valley Bank was going to be a central point of value uh, of failure? Nobody. It's shocking. Uh, but I will tell you, just in terms of setting this up a bit, oh, the second revolution, let me do this first. Mm -hmm. Second revolution is a financial services revolution. Uh, and that's called DeFi. Many people call it DeFi. Ethereum is the network most used for this. Um, uh, Chris Berniski, who was our first analyst, uh, would like to name it the Internet Financial Services uh, Revolution. Uh, that, that way, more people will understand it. DeFi sounds gimmicky, and, and I agree that might be so. Uh, but we do think that it's going to uh, revolutionize financial services and collapse the cost. And then the third revolution, Web3, Metaverse, uh, is, is effectively, for the first time, digital property rights. That's a big idea, too. So we think that uh, crypto, that the, the entire ecosystem, is going to appreciate from $1 trillion today, and Bitcoin's just a little less than half of that, to $25 trillion by 2030. These are very big ideas. Now, to get to the economics part of this, the reason we're going through this crisis uh, is two serious mistaken assumptions that banks and bank examiners have made uh, and also that the Fed has made. Uh, the first is that interest rates, after we went through COVID and mm -hmm. we were worrying about a depression Banks said they were flooded with cash from the stimulus programs. And so banks put it to work in long term interest rates, uh, which at the time were only really one, one and a half percent, because they thought the economy was going to be shut down for a very long time. And the Fed told them that it thought that the economy was going to be down and out for quite a while. So they mm -hmm. put money into securities at one and a half percent and never dreaming that the Fed would raise interest rates by 19 fold in one year. Well, that happened. That has never happened in history. In fact, the biggest increase that we have seen 
uh, in a short period of time was twofold back in the early 80s under uh, Fed Chairman Volcker when he was trying to strangle inflation. Uh, but 19-fold, this would be, uh, this is, you know, a, a magnitude earthquake we have never seen. Last year was a terrible year for crypto. But why was it such a bad year? Um, the, the first reason was stable, uh, algorithmic stable coins. We didn't believe in those at all. They weren't rules-based. And so that was the Terra Luna fiasco. So you have to do your research in this space uh, and, not, uh, and not try to ride a dream of some sorts. But then if you look at uh, Celsius, 3AC, FTX, all of them went bankrupt. Why? Why? They were centralized and opaque, not transparent at all. Uh, in fact, Sam Bankman Fried, so SBF, as everyone came to know him, he didn't even like Bitcoin. He didn't like Bitcoin. Why not? Bitcoin is totally decentralized, completely transparent and auditable. Uh, he couldn't control it. He couldn't control it. And of course, he thought he was a master of the universe. Um, so Bitcoin uh, actually and Ether, neither, not, neither Bitcoin near it, nor Ethereum, those two networks skipped a beat throughout all of those controversies. All of the transactions cleared, all of the margin contract, all of the margin calls that were a part of smart contract, they were satisfied. So actually those crises proved the concept. Now we come to the banking crisis this year. Uh, just think about what a proof of concept this is. Um, the, the decentralized, transparent, audible networks didn't skip a beat. And here we had, you know, stocks halted in the stock market in the regional banking space uh, because there were there were bank runs taking place. Um, that that of course was not happening on uh, on these decentralized networks. Uh, and so I think that, uh, as you say, digital gold um, has now. Uh, gained even more credibility. It came out of the last crisis, the 0809 crisis is when Bitcoin emerged. Uh, and it took another crisis for others to understand, oh, wow, maybe our banking system isn't as thought as safe as I thought it was. And maybe I need a hedge against that. Uh, Bitcoin is a very good hedge. It's a great insurance policy. Yes, the economic measures that the Fed is basing its policies on are uh, old, they're based in the industrial age and they get revised in major, major ways as technology uh, begins to inform them that, wait a minute, uh, we're not measuring this correctly. Uh, and so we think they've been relying on lagging indicators, huge mm -hmm. lag indicators and ignoring the data. And I'll give you the data and then I'll tell you the second mistake that, that uh, was made. Um, the data was in, in spring of 2022, uh, credit default swaps on banks in the banking system started moving up and they kept moving up all year. The Fed ignored that. That, that was starting in January of last year and intensifying through the spring and lasted through most of last year. Uh, the second thing they ignored was a yield curve, which inverted in July an inversion of the yield curve. And, and so to explain that, mm -hmm. uh, typically long rates are above short rates. Yep. July of last year, long rates fell below short rates. That is a signal to the Fed that the economy is either going to slow down rapidly and end up in recession, or that inflation is going to be much lower than expected, or both. Mm -hmm. uh, they ignored that. I wrote a letter, an open letter to the Fed last year in October saying, uh, respectfully, I don't understand why you are raising interest rates by 75 basis points at a clip when we've got conflicting evidence and you're voting unanimously. What about credit default swaps? What about the inverted yield curve? What about commodity prices coming down? Oil price peaked uh, last March, April, 
at $130. By the end of the year, it was near $70. The Fed ignored that. Uh, and it ignored what companies were saying as they were reporting earnings. So they ignored so many things. So I fault them very directly. And, uh, and, and the other thing, the other mistake people made, uh, and regulators fed everyone, was never dreaming that deposits would leave the banking system. We have not had a, a decline in money growth on a year over year basis mm -hmm. since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Money growth is negative year over year right now. And we just got uh, the answer of what that was going to break. It was going to break the banking system because deposits were leaving for higher yielding money market funds. Banks were stuck with these low yielding securities and just could not raise their deposit rates that much. And so deposits left. Uh, and so real problem, the Fed usually responds to uh, interest rates. It's taken them a while. Thank you for watching. Check out the next video to get more insights into the crypto markets.